listening wherever you are across the known world. And welcome to another amazing interview with the crown between two roses, or in fact tonight, the barony of Stormhold between two roses. Welcome. I am, <laughs> sorry, Your Excellencies, Leif and Eleonora. I am Duchess Altani, and my co-host tonight is... Uh, Countess Beatrice. Um, firstly, let us for your patience as we acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet. Good nobles, we come here together in the spirit of fellowship, deepening of our skills, sharing of our knowledge, and a shared interest in the search to find truth through experimental archaeology and historical inquiry. It is in this context that I, Countess Beatrice, on behalf of my kingdom, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we gather. We recognise their continuing connection to land and culture, and we pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and the elders from other communities who may be here today. Thank you so much. And welcome, Leif and Eleonora. It's very exciting to have you on as uh, the newest Baron and Baroness in Lockhart. Thank you for having us. It was uh, very exciting to be asked. I was not expecting it at all. <laughs> so how are you, like the first question, how are you finding being B&B &B of Stormhold? Oh, actually, firstly, where is Stormhold situated in Lockhart? So Stormhold is the uh, main western part of, part of Victoria. Yeah, so the western main part of Melbourne, Melbourne. Yeah, central and western Melbourne and western Victoria. <laughs> Our uh, close next door neighbours to the east, uh, um, the barony of Craig Glass, and then to the north, we've got the Shire of Borders Cross. Lovely. Thank you. Um, so yes, as the newest Baron Bar and Baroness of Lockhart, how are you finding it? Different. <laughs> Not what I we mean, were expecting. <laughs> we've been, what, five, six weeks and we've had no face-to-face -face events, um, including our investiture was um, by Zoom. Um, we've coordinated the Stormhold team for the Lockhart scavenger hunt. Uh, we've got a few things happening on the, the group Facebook pages and things, but when you're sitting here going, we don't know when we're going to be able to see anyone face to face. Yeah. yeah. So yes, it's been a very different step up to what most B&Bs would experience. Yeah, it's so unfortunate that um, it is these plague and pestilent times, but so grateful that you're able to step up and that you're able to um, be successors to Brianna and Miriam. Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice to have done it in person. I'm sure there would have been less sound issues doing it in person, but uh, nonetheless, um, <laughs> it, it, we're very, very grateful to... Um, our baronial seneschal who stepped up at the last moment go, I'll organise all the virtual side of things. Um, and very appreciative to uh, the, the um, stewarding team that had already planned a lot of our in-person investiture, um, which sadly didn't go ahead. Well, hopefully you'll be able to have a big party once. <laughs> Stormhold <laughs> opens up to the wider world, or at least to Stormhold and Craig Stormhold. Glass. Stormhold. <laughs> <laughs> Keep everyone else out, maybe. <laughs> um, and that we can celebrate once again in person. So my question to you is, how did you find the SCA? How did you get started? Okay. Um, I was at La Trobe Uni, uh, which at the time had a branch. And a guy I knew from the course I was doing had, had kept saying to me, oh, you should come do this. I, I mean, I had an interest in history. I was studying science but had an interest in history. Um, and he kept saying, you're going to really love this. But the way he described it, it, it did sound like a cult. So I'd been resisting for a couple of years. And finally, another friend and I sort of, looked at each other and went, mm. it, it was an O-week demo in the, the Agora um, 
and we kind of went, yeah, I will if you will, and held each other's hands as we went to our first newcomers event about two weeks later. Loved it. Went to another event a week later, and a week after that went to Rowanee Festival. Wow. And I was hooked. That's a very short lead time to a festival. Oh, yes. I had <laughs> one half-finished dress and just kept changing mundane shirts underneath all week. <laughs> As for me, it was, uh, um, I was in doing my final year of high school and my girlfriend at the time um, was a year ahead of me. And so she went along for the O week at uh, Monash University, the, which as is, we now know is the College of St. Monica's. And there was two clubs right next to each other, which had a joint membership with each other. You got a membership, one you got the discount on the other membership. And the one that she really wanted to join was the science fiction and fantasy club. And right, the one that we could join at a discounted price was this medieval group. And I've said to her, you should join both of them, join both of them. Well, I'm not really interested in it. I said, yes, but if you join it, I can go along to the events. <laughs> and despite never being a student at Monash, I went along to uh, enough uh, events and meetings and council meetings and things that I, I think it was the second year that I was going along to these things. Um, I was nominated as Seneschal and I had to point out to them, um, I'm not a student here, I can't be Seneschal. And people were arguing with me because I was at so many things of their group. And from there, it just expanded. And I had friends who were a year below me at school. Um, and I got them revved up about the whole idea of this medieval club. Um, you know, we're all Dungeons and Dragons nerds when we were, we were in high school. And so, yeah, we ended up you know, going from there. Um, Help form a branch down in Gippsland, which is now on its second iteration. So, um, yeah, it's not looking back. <laughs> yeah. So, how, how many years have you approximately been in the SCA? For me, it's 28. For me, it's uh, coming up on 26. Well done. <laughs> that, that's impressive. Uh, so, I'm going to ask. Uh, what were your first interests, really? That uh, so the medieval side drew you in, but what were those interests that kept you engaged? Oh, um, I fairly quickly got into cooking. Uh, Thorfinn worded me up to to be the cook for William Marshall that first year, even um, back in the days when it was a big sit down feast, as well as the tournament during the day. Um, and that wasn't the first one I did. I'd, I'd already done a couple of smaller ones by that point. Um, I got into the heraldry, I think, the following year and the belly dance. Um, what else have I done? Heaps. I mean, I loved the costumes. Um, you know, the same costume you singing. Yes, the singing was one of the magical things that first Rowanee Festival. I, we were sort of wandering and ended up at a campfire at the edge of the village green um, and there were three ladies singing by the campfire light so you, you didn't, couldn't see a lot all you could see was the, the firelight on their faces and these voices um, so that that was amazing that that's one of my all-time best memories and for me, it was uh, a case of I was just turning 18 and it was a club where everyone sat around in funny costumes, drinking all sorts of strange things. And half of the people in the funny costumes were wearing corsets. And it sounded like <laughs> a great idea at the time. And then once I actually got into it and discovered things like, you know, the fighting and I'm not much of one to sing or dance, but I love watching singing and dancing. So I would happily be the wallflower of just sitting on the side of the hall, happily enjoying my drink, chatting quietly to some friends while watching these amazing performances and then getting out there. And I've never been a capable fighter, but I've been an enthusiastic fighter. So you know, jumping into whatever form of combat it happens to be uh, and just having fun doing it. Um, so, yeah, I, I remember um, 
our first training session because we only had one um, and so we were fighting with bosses so there was a whole bunch of um you know 17 18 19 year olds running around going to town on each other with bosses and me turning to my girlfriend at the time going oh i want to be a heavy <laughs> do you have a favorite form of combat your excellency um i remember most fondly being an archer back in the days when archers didn't wear very much armor and it coincidentally was also the days when i was a lot fitter and faster and could run around madly and annoy so many of these people in beautiful armor who couldn't get close enough to hit me or you know kill me off um that is definitely my fondest memories of fighting um, but these days I find fighting uh, rapier, uh, doing the fencing, is a little bit more achievable for me and I really quite enjoy doing that. Uh, it is, I've learned a lot more doing fencing than I have in any other form of fighting. Right. That no, reminds me amazing. of the other crazy thing I've done is lists for years. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I did trade, never got authorised for heavy, but I've sat there watching it year after year after year recording it all <laughs> i think there's so a lot of people like who've done that yep. we thank you for that task yeah. we really do <laughs> um now you also have family that play don't you they were yes. born into the sca so to, so to speak yes my my three definitely grew up in the SCA. Um, Kib's first event, they were seven days old. Um, so by the time the older two were crawling, they both knew that they didn't go past the list row. So it was only the youngest. Kira, I had to actually pull back from the list row once or twice and sit her down and explain, no, that's you don't go past there look they're swinging big heavy swords they're going to hit you they're not watching you you need to keep away from them and once we've been through this about twice she had it as well but the older two never went near the listro um they've grown up doing some of the things that i've done some of the things on their own um Ronan's got his own interests. He spends festival at, at um, the fort playing boffa. Um, but also he, he's big on archery. Um, Kib's done a lot of heraldry, a lot of work in the kitchen. Kira's discovering that, yeah, she likes the textiles. So, yes, they've grown up just thinking this is normal and then go to school and people don't get it. And, and that, that's been a, a, a bit of a jolt for each of them, I think, at times. Whereas, and then there's uh, yours. I've, I've got uh, my two, my eldest again, I think was probably about a week or two for their, uh, old for their first event. Um, and doesn't really, has come along to a few things as an adult. It's not really their cup of tea anymore. Uh, my youngest still comes along to events and we're actually filling out the high school um, uh, interests and you know, the side of things uh, this afternoon you know what hobbies do i have so much is scouting and uh, it's enjoy gaming and of course you do the, the evil reenactment their response was basically along the lines of but that's not a hobby that's just something we do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so i should probably point out my eldest is about to turn 19. my um, eldest is 22. yeah um then uh ronan's 17 and Kira's 13 and your youngest is 12 so yeah. no choice for the younger that, ones they, they get really dragged really along <laughs> hey no choice for the younger ones they have to get dragged along at the yes. moment <laughs> but at, at the age of, that mine are um they get the choice they can come or yeah. not come even as we've been doing the zoom feasts and things last year and this year it turns into a whole family activity with the prepping the, the feast or running the campfire and all that sort of thing. Then you add into that, I have a, a, another partner, Nicolette from uh, Hidalgar, 
and she's got three kids who are all in the SCA as well. And so you, you get uh, you know, myself and Eleanor and Nicolette and all of the kids together and then, you know, various partners and things like that. We could run an event just by ourselves at this point. <laughs> Almost. Now, it's lovely having the children in and keeping them in and whether they stay as they grow up. But, yes, I think it's a very important part of the SCA having family. So it's, and it's not just the family you've got, but the family you choose to have too. Definitely. And the, the, the connections and the household and so on. Yes. So did you both meet, oh. you met each other in the SCA? Yes. So we've known each other pretty much since you joined. Yeah. So 24, 25 years or whatever. Um, so we've known each other, flirted, married someone else each, um, and then after marriages broke up and so on, we have got together about five years ago. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, we, we've done SCA all sorts of ways. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good way of putting it. <laughs> With growing up in the SCA and now becoming Baron and Baroness of Stomhold, what do you find the, how are you finding, like, I know you're only very young in the role, but what differences are you currently finding from being who you were beforehand to who you are now with the pointy hats? For me, it's the little things, like apparently I'm not meant to declare war on other baronies because that actually means something now. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just those little, those little things. Yeah, I heard a story, heard a, a little snippet earlier about something about the inner spore. I, I think may, you need to talk about your, your MS challenge. I you? may have uh, accidentally pre-invaded inner spore during our investiture while His Majesty was there. Um, and that may not have gone down as well as it could have. Um, one of the things that I actually do, I have multiple sclerosis as well, and every year um, I'm very grateful for the fact that I'm fit and healthy enough that I can actually do um, a 10k fun run, um, which I do in the full Viking gear, uh, mail, helmet, shield, weapons, the whole works. Uh, not a lot of running happens as a general rule, but uh, I do the 10 kilometres in that, and each year I have different sorts of challenges. If I raise a large amount of money or only drink from the drinking horn, not from the paper cups provided, or I'll sound my hunting horn at every kilometre mark or things like that. And every year since I've been done doing it, next year will be the 10th year, uh, the million dollar goal. If I raise a million dollars, I will organise a ship and we will go raiding on the town of Lindisfarne. But because the town of Lindisfarne in the UK is a bit far, We'll go for the one in Tasmania. That is absolutely so, fair. Yeah, Having lived is, in uh, lived in Innisfor, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly yeah. where Lindisfarne is. <laughs> I have photos of me standing in front of the Lindisfarne Yacht Club and the Lindisfarne Catholic Church and places like that wearing a T-shirt that just said bike. <laughs> so that's the background to him saying he was going to invade Innisfor. Okay, and, so... Uh, you just need a, a T-shirt now that says captured. I know, I'm sure that there is a, a few people that I could uh, you know, encourage to wear that. I could pose your photos again. I do plan on getting down there again. You know, not with an arm. Take your storm hold banner. I'm glad you clarified that. So our tech tonight is uh, is actually from Innisfor and he's putting a few comments in saying that uh, you bring the people, I'll bring the list ropes. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the challenge is there, Your Excellency. <laughs> Don't know well, if, if uh, David and Arabella are up for that challenge, but... <laughs> I'm sure that it's a discussion that could be had. <laughs> and depends what his majesty says as well of course of course nothing would happen without his majesty's blessings <laughs> and part of the discussion was around the fact that technically the stormhold and Craiglass um, southern boundaries end at the high tide mark 
which means that at low tide in Victoria, we, in Victoria, not, not in Victoria, sorry, so at <laughs> low you. tide, we can Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> That's a far-reaching parody. I didn't know you went quite to the shore. Well, it is a far-reaching uh, parody. <laughs> It's a far-reaching varying in Innisfor's advantage. So, uh, yes, we can technically walk to Innisfor. So I'm more than happy to bring the list ropes and the people. We will need to meet us at that northern border. <laughs> you may have to uh, speak with your neighbours. So uh, Baroness Margie is uh, just asking, wondering, wondering where your alliances may lie. <laughs> Uh, well, so I think this is the first uh, first interview where we've kind of encouraging war declarations. <laughs> no, I'm not encouraging. No, no, no. As I said at the time, you might have the boat, I have the sail. <laughs> <laughs> that, that rowing is hard work. So <laughs> It's always good to have the steady influence, Your Excellency, <laughs> <laughs> to keep them in check, shall I say. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, Leif, Baron Leif, you do Viking yes. quite a bit. So what uh, what got you interested in, in that era? Um, it's one of my favorite stories to tell. Uh, I got into Viking reenactment out of spite, um, <laughs> which uh, has reasons to do anything. It's an admirable reason to do it. Absolutely. Um, I had a very religious upbringing, a very uh, Christian upbringing, and despite not actually being overly religious at the time when I joined, um, I decided that I wanted to go very, very much a crusader, um, you know, Templar style, full on religious persona with a religious device and the full-on uh cruise you know early crusades uh, outfits and everything and tried registering a device that was very religious and it was bounced for being very religious and that just really annoyed me at the time and so i've gone fine if i can't be super religious what's the most you know opposite of that that i can think of one of you know these like full-on pagan type, I know I'll be Viking, that's as anti-Christian you know, as I can think of, and I got into that, and the more I sort of got into it, and sort of go, oh, I should learn a little bit more about this, if I'm just what I'm going to do, out of spite, so oh, this is actually a really fascinating culture, it has so many more facets that I've ever realised, and have since really found it just an amazing thing to learn more and more about every time I think, yeah, I, I, I think I know everything I need to know. And so, oh, yeah, <laughs> I know more and more and more. Um, so, yeah, so I got into that. My alter ego when I'm doing the fundraising is the MS Viking. Um, so I've uh, you know, reached out to places like the Ross Gilder Shipyards and explained the situation if I ever raised a million dollars. And they've said, if you raise the million dollars, um, we will provide a ship at cost price to you. You just need to pick it up. The problem <laughs> being, of course, it's in Denmark. So, <laughs> <really> <laughs> uh, uh, and Eleonora, what is your persona? Um, when I joined, I learned French in high school. They're still very much loving. French language and culture. So I chose a Norman French persona. Um, I then proceeded to make garb from just about every year except that. Um, because way back in the early 90s, we, well, initially we were working from the known world handbook as documentation for garb. Um, so I, I sort of started there, bounced all around, did some late periods, like the corsets that Leaf was talking about earlier. Oh yeah, I'll go one of those. Went to the year and um, I've done Viking and then I've done 14th century and um, 15th and all over the place. Spanish. Uh, I've more recently been looking a little bit at Indian, but I keep going back to the Viking too. Um, particularly, I guess, for the camping 
events um, or the um, picnic in a park type events, storm hold monthly bashes and so on. It's comfortable, it's easy, I can do everything because I'm not one of these people for sort of sitting around in fancy garb. I want to be able to roll my sleeves up and get into the kitchen and put the tent up and work over the fire and all that sort of stuff. So I've found biking very practical. So I, I keep sort of heading back that way. And of course, dating a Viking, I've kind of ended up further that way. Well, Stormhold really does have that uh, reputation for the biking personas. Yeah. There is quite a history uh, of the previous oh. barons and baronesses in that era. Yeah. Not all of them by any means. But... No. When I first joined uh, Sven and Ingerbjörg were uh, baron and baroness. So, yeah, that was very much one of those, uh, that, that, that first impression as well of Stormhold was, now, this is yeah. a Viking group. Whereas for me, um, Elaine and Lucrezia were just stepping down and they did late period and Stybron and William before them were late period. Okay. You find yeah, I have... Sorry, you're excellent. No, you're right. um, I was just going to say my, my first interactions in Stormhold were uh, when Sven and Ingeborg were on the thrones as well. So, and that was actually one of my first introductions to biking. Oh, okay. Yeah. I yeah. feel like such a baby. Through, through the Northern Reaches. <laughs> and I mean, the research on that has grown and grown in the intervening decades. I occasionally do, um, as part of another group, um, I do uh, 15th century. Uh, 14th century uh, English, which I refer to the 14th century English as my late period, uh, uh, much to the horror of some people. Uh, the one true century, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where for me it's kind of middle. So you found yourselves doing Viking. I don't know where I'm going with that. That's great. <laughs> Good. I'm stamped. What am I saying? I don't know. So what keeps you in the SCA? Ooh, the people, um, the magic. Like I was talking about with that first Grow Any Festival, there were just so many magic moments where you did get transported back. It was a different world. The, the whole, I, I guess in some ways, the, the romanticism that the Victorian era based on the Middle Ages, um, but the fact that the society still tends to uphold that. Um, and yeah, like I said, the people, you, you form friendships and interests and people who understand your weirdnesses and uh, yeah, it, it's home. It's family. Yeah, for myself, much the same. It, it's, it just feels right. It's where I'm meant to be. Um, my other big uh, involvement outside of work and immediate family is uh, scouting. And you know, it, the crossover between those you know, the two organisations, the number of reenactors I know who are also involved in scouting to the point uh, I remember the 2016 Jamboree sitting around in the Rovers bar um, at a table with five other reenactors all talking about how the medieval demonstration that was done at the Jamboree, how much better we could have done it if we'd organised it. And, uh, you know, it's it's it just feels like it's where you're meant to be. These are my, my chosen family. Yeah. It just happens to be a really big worldwide family. Mm. Yeah. And there's skills that you learn along the way too. Um, not just the, the specific craft skills, but the how to organise events, how to um, how to look at life. It, it, it sort of switch, 
features into the, the permaculture and earth care and, and sustainability to some degree too, because most of the medieval practices were sustainable. Not all. It's, it's what's old is new again. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I have to absolutely agree, especially that community point and what you learn. I'm going back to the discussion about uh, having second, genera second and third generations in the SCA, the skills that you get from the SCA and that are embedded into our youth oh, yeah. uh, are unbelievable in comparison to uh, quite a lot of youth out there that don't have that full community and that, that community mindset. Yeah, yes. Yeah, um, in the, the one of the brief windows that we've been out of lockdown uh, for the last couple of years was uh, during the, the weekend of the coronation um, and just watching all of the, uh, my kids, uh, Ella or my kid, Eleonora's uh, kids and all of the other kids of similar sorts of age range, you know, you're, you're anywhere from 11 to early, uh, young 20s. adults. Um, all just sitting around and they are just their own people. Like I could not see any of these kids hanging out on the weekend at the footy club, you know, sinking beers and uh, all that sort of stuff. These are... No, they'll watch a tawny sinking me. Yeah. yeah. They, they <laughs> very different people and I wouldn't have them any other way. Yeah. I, I have to say it's one of the things that I do absolutely love. I don't have children, but... I love watching the children grow up in the SCA and seeing the, the roles and responsibilities and just the, the adults that they become and having, because I've been in for 29 years, so having seen so many grow up in the SCA, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Um, um, Eleanor is just quickly backing off to answer one of the aforementioned children calling, I believe. I think the so, other thing that oh, sorry, no, I, was right. say, I think the yeah. other thing that they learn is how to care for others as well, because you generally see the older of the mob ha chasing after the little ones, especially like things at the fort battle or the quest, helping out, and then they take over the quest as young adults or slightly yeah young adults looking again looking after the little ones. That's always lovely to see as well, especially at a festival. Festival a few years ago, uh, my youngest uh, kept disappearing and I couldn't work out where they kept wandering off to until I eventually worked out that it was a uh, certain Duchess's household, I believe, that she was ducking off to because had made best friends, you know, with the, with, uh, uh, with your son. Uh, it was, so every time I was Where's Elise gone? Oh, okay. I know where she's gone. It's lovely, isn't it? Sort of, where is that child? Oh, okay. And, and then you go, you know, your son would turn up for lunch. And, you know, we've been in lunch. And, you know, Thank a, you. He's, oh, I think he's had lunch already, but that's okay. He's a growing lad. That's some more food. <laughs> Um, I'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, unfortunately, Eleanor has actually got to duck off unexpectedly um, for uh, child-related child uh, issues. <laughs> That's okay. You're. It's all on you now. Uh, I'll, I can talk for more than two people. As long as everything's okay. Oh, I was about to say, now without any uh, holds barred, I can start as many wars as I want. That was her party comment. Don't start any wars. <laughs> I, uh, I do actually have a question for you, and it's something that Eleonora uh, alluded to earlier, which was about the magic of the SCA. What do you see as the magic of the SCA? Um, it's, yeah, you get to be someone else. You get to be somewhere else without having to go through all of that world-changing change. Uh, it, it's a... You know, those little things of we get to be the people that we want to be without having to pick up the different personas that we wear in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, I'm lucky enough that for the most part, I am who I am. I don't have to be anyone else. Um, I did spend 10 years in a corporate job uh, where I would have to turn up to work in a college shirt and all of these horrible things that I don't like and have to be very polite to people I didn't want to be polite to. Whereas here, I think I can wear a tunic for you know, if I'm running around setting up tents or what have you, I can 
do wear whatever and I can chat to people and people uh, a lot not even just a case of friendlier they're just more honest I think I, uh, for the most part is what I find they, they, they can let that guard down in a way that they can't because it's not you know Bob that's uh, doing such and such it's Lord Robert that's doing this so they, they feel that they can betray just themselves a little bit more yeah, I have to say one of the things that I I love is that there's there's kind of an implicit trust of everybody across the kingdom and, and across the SCA. And it's I think one of the biggest challenges is when that trust is breached, we all feel it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, it is that sense of community. So, yeah, I, I was just curious to see what your perspective on that magic component was. Yeah, and I mean, it's even especially being um, someone who's got kids in the SCA and has had kids in the SCA for many years. Um, it's those little things like if I was at a public campground and I found out that my kid had wandered off to somebody else's campsite, I would freak out. But I know that they're you know, smart enough to know that they will go somewhere where they know that they're safe. They'll stay somewhere where there's other kids or adults that they know, but even so, it's the whole village side of things. It's not just your family. It's not just your household even. You are part of a village. Mm. Yeah. 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 I, I love it, and that's why I've been doing, part of the reason I've been doing the SEO for so long. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the... It's one of my favourite things that I like pointing out as well. If you ever do a, a an image search for Viking gift things, Viking gift will be the first one that will come up. Um, and there's the uh, the old saying of uh, it takes a child to oh, it takes a village to raise a child. And the great theme of my child standing there with an axe, tiny and cute and adorable, with the uh, caption of it takes a child to raise a village. <laughs> I didn't realise that was your child. It's a gorgeous photo. I get tagged in that regularly and often with someone who has no idea that it's my child and they'll say something along the lines of, oh, this reminds me so much of your kids. And so, yeah, it should. It really should. We actually have quite a bit of chatter happening on the Facebook feed mm. about tabards, household tab like um, children wearing tabards so they knew who to be returned to. Did your children ever do that? Uh, yeah, so my kids all had, um, my eldest used to have a little pouch, uh, not a pouch, sorry, just like a, almost like a favour um, that they would wear on their belt and it had my phone number and everything on the inside of that. Mm -hmm. um, and my youngest um, has generally had things uh, stitched into the back of their garb, um, which uh, in, in the last five years as Eleanor has actually been the one doing that, uh, which I don't know if it's a good or bad sign that she also does that with my things that she makes for me. I do love that idea of having a favour with the, the name and phone number stitched on the inside. I know for Roni Festival, we, we give mine as key tags, yep. but having that favour and having that identification, that's awesome. It had a very, very terribly done uh, version of my device on it, but it was sufficiently recognisable that people would go, that's Leaf's kid, and it made life a lot easier. But yeah. within Cray Glass, which um, when my eldest was growing up, uh, earned the nickname of Crash Glass, um, because we had so many kids of around that age, um, you would just see this pack of children just wandering along it you know, be it a GSG or we used to have the, uh, the soup moots and things like that. The, the, the southern events, you could just see them all in this massive clump. And that clump would divide up into its own little you know, cliques and things like that. But they all still stay together and you'd hear one parent yell out, it's lunchtime, and then all of them would start moving. And at times it would be like you know, almost like the plague of locusts where they would go through and each would pick from everyone's uh, table and that what they wanted. All the plates would be cleared off quite happily and all the kids would be happily fed, but 
it was over the course of you know this massive banquet for them. I think my child, my children definitely got fed at festival by other people rather than their normal household. <laughs> Our household too boring, too stank. Go away, go find the other, other people's food always tastes better than the kids. It could be the same type of food. It and does it matter. Taste it better. Doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> and and you'll find I know that we've had kids in, in our campsite and they've eaten salad and veggies which they never do <laughs> back in their normal campsite. They've been told to be polite and eat what's put in front of them. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. It's also one of those things where you come into the, you know, you have these random kids and you go, good, I get you to clear off these tables for me. And they'll go, oh, yeah, not a problem. You're not my parent. I'll do what you say, <laughs> random person. Whereas my kids will just, like, look at me and go, why? That is so true. <laughs> ah, they're all good kids. Yeah. So steady up as Baron and Baroness. Do you have many plans? We've had many plans and many plans have changed already. Um, there's a lot of things that we do want to do and still plan on doing. Um, but just that timeline is sort of pushed back that little bit. Um, William Marshall is one of the ones that we'd love to see really reignited as being the big key event that it used to be. Um, and for many, many reasons, many, many aspects, um, it sort of has uh, dwindled off, especially obviously like last year and um, again it'll be this year. It, it's, it's not been as big and... Um, grandiose as it used to be um, and we'd like to try and get it back to that point but also just the even not just the big events but also the little events I love the little potlucks and things like that uh, it, it's always been my favorite ones where you can just hang out with your friends and that's just a lovely thing to be able to do um, other big events um, or big Things you may have, I, I've been tried to be subtle about it, but I do love uh, instigating a little bit of uh, artificial tension between groups. Um, so I actually ran for the role of Baron, uh, applied for the role of Baron at a Craig Glass a couple of times, uh, including one of the times it was during a certain mundane election. And I was very, very, very loudly proclaiming things like, if I become Baron, I'll build a wall and make Stormhold pay for it. And uh, things like that. And so, yeah, so I think there's now some questions as to whether or not I became Stormhold Baron just so that I could make Stormhold pay for it. However, again, my Seneschal has stepped in and has said, no, there is nothing in the budget for that. So we'll, we'll work it out. You know? I have to say... Baroness Margie has put a comment up earlier saying that she's only here to check plots and plannings because good fences wall, walls make good neighbours. <laughs> so, yes, um, I uh, had uh, Thorgrim, who's the seneschal of uh, Craig Glass as well, has um, offered to sell me bricks very cheaply. Uh, yes, Margie and John have made comments about this uh, coming <laughs> coming back to all of me. So, yeah, I'm sure that there will eventually be something. One of the ideal goals that I would love to be is there has been the chess challenge uh, between Stormhold and Craig Glass as an ongoing thing, um, which Craig Glass has fairly consistently won, unfortunately, for a number of years. Um, but I'm sure that uh, we can include something in there where we there may be some barrier fights as well, which uh, you know, I'm sure I can build a wall for that. So you have a friendly rivalry with um, the Barony of Craiglass then? I, I <laughs> primarily used to play with Craiglass and uh, in the last uh, year or so have actually moved well into Stormhold. So um, I definitely have some fond uh, contact with the folks within Craiglass still. Uh, and yeah, you, you can't have two baronies in the one one city, mundane city, without uh, having a little something going on. 
Her Excellency Miriam actually suggested walls of lamingtons with a tabletop trebuchet. Well, I think that that's a fantastic idea. I, I More points for getting it in the mouth. I, I think that I can probably uh, come up with an entire event focused entirely around building walls. I would not want to be the person to clean that up. <laughs> this is why we have our You have a point. <laughs> Uh, and so before it's too late that I see uh, any wars, Her Excellency has returned. So, what mischief did you get up? Absolutely nothing. There was no plans or plotting whatsoever. Uh huh. <laughs> You're not dead, so I don't believe you. So, one of the questions that I did ask Leaf, and it referred back to a comment that you made earlier, yeah. was about what you found to be the magic of the SCA. Ah, so what? It's my turn to answer. It is your turn to yeah. answer. Um, sometimes I think it's the, the simplicity. Um, campfires always help, whether that be singing in the dark or whether it be cooking on them in the daylight. Um, just something there that it's it is the people although that first magical time I talked about I didn't know any of the people um it's transporting you back or somewhere else or to a, a, a fantasy world or something like that it's it's not the mundane the humdrum the pressure even when you like running an event and yes, there's pressures and things go wrong and all that sort of thing, it's still different. Um, and it's still a much more, in many ways, supportive community. And that's even sort of coming from, um, my kids all do scouts as well as leave. Um, and I was a, a guide leader back when I was a teenager. Um, so I've, I've got that background and you I mean you've got other social circles that yes there's a community but it, there's something still special about SCA. Yeah it really is. My apologies so we we did actually have a little bit of a a, a discussion about walls and it degenerated into <laughs> wars. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I just dubbed Altani in to tell you all about it. Thanks. <laughs> it was um Her Excellency Miriam who suggested that um you have a lamington wall. Well you build wall or, uh, and you throw lamingtons with trebuchets. But as Beatrice has said, cleaning that up might be interesting. But Declan has said have it outside and then the bin chickens can clean it all up. What a waste Mag of lamingtons. <laughs> well, Maggie and John are quite keen to, to be involved in this wall with you. So uh, I think we'll leave that to you guys. If it does occur, we would love to see this. Yes. <laughs> the lamington wall. <laughs> I know Magnus would be heavily involved in that. Well, he's leaving us now. Oh, soon. Yeah. Soon, yes. But he'll come back maybe, for a lamington maybe. wall. Yeah. Well, we were talking about trying to get a, an outdoor event in before he goes. A little bit north, it's okay. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's not impossible for a weekend, yeah. Uh, so, but yes. I, uh, I Maybe it's the William Marshall Lamington War. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the questions that we do like to ask our, uh, our guest is, um, what is one of your most favourite memories of your time in the SCA? You first, that is one that you haven't spoken about yet. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah one of my fondest memories ever of the SCA ties in really well to what we were just discussing. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I started one of the groups in, uh, in Gippsland in Victoria uh, out the... Uh, east, what's now the camp? Uh, sorry, the uh, the hamlet, hamlet. of Bronahola. 
um, and I had a uh, I organised an event down there. Or I, I'm good at organising other people to organise things as long as I don't have to actually organise anything. I'm good at inspiring people to do things. Um, and I inspired an event in Wontaggy, uh, where I grew up, and um, the feast for the evening was outside. Uh, so we had the big marquees and pavilions and everything all set up outside. And this is when Rudolph and Nicolette were a Baron Baroness of Stormhold. And we'd had an amazing day of fighting and hunting and all sorts of things. We, we had uh, a boar hunt where the boar looked suspiciously like Sir Atar and we managed to kill the entire hunting party. Um, we had deer hunts which uh, involved a very, very sweaty boar target wearing a, a massive big fur coat and um, a, a helmet with antlers off it, running through the woods and being hunted down by the, the hunters. And, uh, and then with the uh, King of the West's blessing at the time, uh, we had venison for dinner. And so we're having this massive big banquet outside. It was absolutely gorgeous night. Everything was lovely. I'm sitting there at my table chatting away with all of my friends. I felt something hit me on the back of the head and it felt like a bug that had flown into the back of my head. So, uh, that's okay. And then a moment later, another thing hits me. And it must be really bad mosquitoes or something out here. And then something else hits me and I notice a pea fall onto the table. So somebody's throwing peas at me and I'm trying to work out who it was. And then I'm looking sort of, you know, talking to my friend saying, someone's throwing peas, at which point a bread roll hits me in the back of the head. And I turn around just in time to see Baron Rudolph going, <laughs> sort of, am I allowed to retaliate at the high table in a food fight? What's the... What's the etiquette here? And, and uh, Baron Rudolph clarified that very quickly that yes, you totally could. And the entire thing just evolved into a bit of a food fight for quite a while. Um, it was just such a fun, silly event. And the next morning, there was no food on the ground because all the birds had cleared it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what what my favourites would be. There have just been so many. Um, Rowany Festival, Border Wars, because um, I was at the first um, Borders Cross event and the first Border War. Um, yeah, that event down in one tag was fun. Um, um, Baroness. She's brought it up a couple of times in the chat. Yeah. Sleeping on the floor at the one thaggy scout hall? Yes, yes. It's a comfortable concrete floor. I don't think I ever slept on that one. <laughs> we camped at the school. Yeah, yeah there's um, camping at the school. And we stayed at your sister's cottage one time. Yeah. On the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of sleeping on the floor. Back in the days when we could actually do these things and not pay for it horribly the next day. Yeah, when when the bodies we weren't still well. Bad. <laughs> I'm with you, Lee. If I don't sleep on the floor well, <laughs> give me a bed any day. I manage a stretcher or a bed roll, but yeah, I've gone of the days where I'll just sleep straight on the ground. Yeah, I, I at least not, want a cat mattress. Not something. without a lot more drinks in me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Ronnie's for that's what festival is for yes so, Eleanor drink you... too much and just pour you into bed yeah. yeah your bed not my bed <laughs> so Eleanor you're not entirely sure you've got a lot of good memories oh yeah make the SCA for you then yes um yeah there's probably themes to them rather than specific events a lot of kitchens have been heaps of fun. You tend to get the, the really good people in the kitchens. Um, a, a lot of you, you worker type people, um, the ones who'll just get in there and help. Um, so yeah, lots of fun in kitchens. Do you have a no shit there I was story then? I'm sure I do, but can I think of any? I'm sure Leaf has plenty that he can. Oh, uh, Leaf so will make up for it. Yeah. 
wish. <laughs> or do you have one that's the both of you together? Oh. Since we've been together, we've, we've, we've largely been very domesticated. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're older and have kids to run around after these days. <laughs> well, we're almost over needing to run around after them. Yeah. Almost, it says she having had to go out and rescue one just now. The oldest one. <laughs> well, no. Well, yes, it is the oldest, the, the um, adopted into the family one. Yeah, so our, they're our, okay. Kip's best friend. Uh, so, yeah. Our investors, uh, Baroness Margie has just pointed out, was uh, definitely a bit of a no shit there we were. And, you know, prior to the event, you know, we, we'd, had, we'd had audio issues. We knew that we'd had audio issues. And so our Ronan, and uh, Eleonora's little, uh, little child, her son, um, had done a whole bunch of um, troubleshooting to try and work out what it was. And we pretty much figured out that the issue was that he was using Zoom through um, the web browser instead of using the, the app. So he's rushed uh, downloading the actual app and we did a test run before the invest. Not a problem, the sound was working fine. As soon as we've started having to talk, there goes the sound. We sound like robots through the entire investiture. And of course, we sounded fine to us. We had no idea there was a problem until afterwards when people are going, your sound's gone. What, what, why do you sound like a darling? <laughs> so, so that's the new uh, Stormhole Baronial Investiture voice is the Dalek. Yes. Yes, yes. apparently so. Except not to us. No, no, it would sound fine to the you know, whoever we hand off to. They, they walk into a, a metal tube and uh, in person. They're just going to need to use a voice modulator. Is all. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, Miss uh, Mistress Miriam um, Batshimian has said your Middle East event, event, Eleonora, where there was a segregation between the genders. The women were oh, having an awesome fun. time and the men were bored. Yes. The women were having a blast. So it was a, a small scout hall and we had a, a calico curtain the full length of the hall. So there was food coming out to both sides and um, there were some of the men were happily drumming, some of the women were too, and the women were dancing and because a lot of us did belly dance back then. Um, and... The curtain probably should have come down earlier than it did. But, yeah, the, we discovered that the women could have a ball and the men were bored. They couldn't <laughs> you, entertain Why was themselves. that? Like, what was the none difference? None of them got what? up and danced. Apparently none of them decided to play chess or anything either. But, yeah, <laughs> they were all going, so we, the, we can't flirt with the women. What, what are we doing here? Because, of course, in those days, we were all in our 20s and, and flirting and pairing up and repairing and, yeah, and, and, yeah, discovered that the men couldn't, couldn't entertain themselves. Wrestling. <laughs> Should have suggested and, them to do wrestling. No. Particularly, I guess, knowing that the women were just the other side of that curtain and were having fun. Why not be? <laughs> The story for here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, we are almost at our time, and it has just been amazing to uh, to get to know you both. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with us or with the populace? Oh, keep having fun. Don't take yourself too seriously. I need to do it, and I have lots of fun. Yeah. Um, keep the magic in it. it. Keep doing the things that you enjoy. Um, because not, that way you'll, you'll, you'll draw people in with your enthusiasm. If you're not having fun, you're probably doing something wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And that's what I actually say to my students. If you're not enjoying it, why are you doing it? And that was something that was passed to me um, quite strongly. If you're not enjoying it, don't do it. If it's not fun, you know, find something that is. 
Yeah. I've yeah. had this discussion many times. When, as I said earlier, I enjoy fighting. I'm not very good at it, but I enjoy it. And I've had a lot of people say, well, if you go to training every week, you, know, you have to change your fitness regime. And, but then I'm not having fun doing it. I just like turning up and having a bit. It's, it's what I enjoy doing. I don't care if I win. Yeah, absolutely. You're just as happy with golfers. Really yeah, oh, do. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Hand you that tawny. You know, something silly. You know, <laughs> I, I, my, my partner, uh, Nicolette, I love fencing against her because she giggles madly the entire time and I just think that's the best thing. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Master Brian DeCatter, I used to love fighting against him because he would just giggle the whole time. <laughs> It was great, yeah. and the number of people who I would see him fighting against them, and he would just be grinning madly and giggling, and the other fighter who didn't know him would just be getting more and more offended by this because <laughs> clearly he was toying with them. I was like, oh, no, he was fighting to the full of his ability. It's just that he was having fun doing it. So I have heard a story about Master Brian lately. I haven't seen it, but apparently his mask is absolutely phenomenally amazing. So if you do see it, you know, please check it out and give him some feedback on it because I know how much he would love that. Does Master Brian do anything do anything that's not amazing? No, no. <laughs> Very much my early memories are of him in Stormhold and he's ridiculously wonderfully over the top everything. The chickens. The chickens. The chickens on everything. Chickens. And the horse armor. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It has been absolutely amazing to have you on the show tonight and to get to know you a little bit more and to share your stories with the populace. We wish thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> we wish you a very long and peaceful reign as Barony of Stormhold. Hopefully fewer lockdowns your way and that you can get out and play with everyone and people and that we can have visitors once again in the near future. It would be lovely to see you all in yes. person. And uh, thank you to everybody watching tonight. It has been awesome to, uh, to have you join us. Um, please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel, Crown Between Two Roses. And join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. where Altani and I will be putting uh, Baron Kalbada from Kalbada's Corner under the pump. So please, uh, we look forward to joining you then and have a good night. Stay safe. Good night, everyone. Bye. Take care.